a lot of people think salads are just the way to go. Like <laughs> it's healthy because it's a salad. Yeah. <sighs> you know, if you <laughs> I think I found your delivery. There it is. Oh salads. My God. <laughs> I had a client who loves salads with a blue cheese dressing. And if you were to look up the oh. calories on a blue cheese dressing, you might as well have two double cheeseburgers, a large french fry, and a regular Coke because... That's how many calories are it in is, dressing? It is, yes. And the worst part is every time it gives you those calories, it's for two teaspoons. No one has two teaspoons. Back to the Delulu Canoe Podcast. Woo! Applause, applause, applause. Today we have joining me, as always, my right hand man, the guy with the plan. We have Cosmo from the Cosmo Show. Hello. Um, are you like closet cosplaying as me today? Like, what is this? <laughs> yes, yes. This is the freaky guy sides of guide side of. You. The there Delulu you go. Canoe. Yeah. Yes, gender bend. Yes. We love it. <laughs> Today we actually have a very, very special guest. But Cosmo, I wanted to ask you about how many times a week do you work out? Like once or twice? Um, let's see. When I'm using the microwave, if it's a two minute countdown, I'm doing like pull ups, like not pull ups, push ups on oh. the counter to that time. Yeah. I keep my I keep my arms in shape and my shoulders and my like chest will area because I know like, you know, the older oh. you get the uh, man boobs will follow, but uh, but oh. definitely <laughs> the uh, microwave and then filling up my water cooler. So that's pretty much almost every day. Oh and, wow! And then I walk. I walk yeah. a lot. So so you're like yeah. pretty active for somebody who like you don't have a gym membership, right? No. Wow. I've got stuff at home, a curl bar, and then the uh, resistance bands, mm. and I have one of those things to shock you, which I tried doing those on my stomach, abs, and whatnot. I'm like, turn up the intensity. I'm like, oh. oh. God, no, I can't watch this. I can't watch Grey's Anatomy and do this. Oh. So, yeah. I've tried those, too. They're, they're great. They're horrible. So great. <laughs> but um, today, to educate us a little bit more on fitness, we have one of my really good close friends, JP. Woo. Welcome Woo. to the podcast. I gave myself my own applause. Woo. Yes, your own applause. Thank there you, you go. Thank you. Move it up. Move it up. What's up? Nothing much. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> I'm excited and scared. Why are you scared? Scared for the Delulu. Oh. Dum, bum, bum. Yeah. The Delulu <laughs> can be a little nerve wracking. I think a lot of people have a little like pre-podcast jitters. Mm -hmm. But once they get here, you sit in this big squishy then chair. We lure you into the canoe. Exactly. We tell you that it's okay to have Delulus. And then you let it all out. <laughs> then you vent. <laughs> Just go. Yeah, but yeah. I'm so excited to have you here Thank because you. we haven't had anybody who really specializes on fitness, but also like still dabbles in the acting world, which mm -hmm. I think is kind of like it's unique. Like I don't know anybody like you. Well, thanks. I wish um, a bunch of casting directors felt the same way. They're but watching. Um, <laughs> cast <laughs> us. Cast us now. Headshots. Headshots. <laughs> Flashing all over the screen. No, thanks. Um, it's it's fun. It's actually um, to live in Los Angeles, you really have to do everything and dabble in everything. So that's part of the mixture. Yeah. You have to juggle, juggle a lot of hats, do you a lot do. of things to make it. You do. It's actually very interesting because I didn't meet you as an actor. I met mm -hmm. you as a dancer. That's right. And it was through a mutual friend because I needed some like awesome dancers for my song Retail Therapy. If you haven't heard it, what are you doing? But JP's actually in the music video. I yeah. am. Yeah. I got a cool little bucket hat. Yes. <laughs> and I do a little nice worm action on the floor that they caught in slow-mo. That was awesome. It was so it cool. It was neat. It was a lot of fun on set. That was a fun music video. Yeah, you had fun too. Yeah, it was. It was honestly the most fun um, I've ever had on an awesome music video like that. Yeah. Thanks, God. Well, no, because we usually, as dancers, you get treated horribly. We do in this industry, and there's a lot more of just like you go with the flow. Hey, dancers, get in the back. Okay, fine. Hey, dancers, go do this. And hey, you're needed right now, and you're there for ten hours, and then you finally get used for like the last ten minutes. Ugh, that's and my like, biggest pet peeve. Yes. Oh, like I get it now because I've been a director a couple mm -hmm. of times that like obviously every individual person can't be your main focus, mm -hmm. but I, 
it's the nature of the industry that you show up and what is it? Hurry up and wait. Yes. I think it's the, the slang for it. Exactly. But man, it's, it's so exhausting and it's so like anticlimactic. So by the time you get to your scene, you're just like, okay, <laughs> but you were so gracious and so wonderful in it. And you guys all had wonderful attitudes. It Cosmo was, was in it too. That's right. <laughs> yes. And behind the scenes, Cosmo was cooking the burgers. Yeah. Oh, you were the chef. Yes. I am the, the chef. chef. The grill master. I love it. I love Catering it. I have fun food. doing that. Aww. I do. It was neat. I, that actually is something I really remember um, clearly. Just mm. that kind of took off the pressure. Mm. When Cosmo was like, what kind of burger do you want? I was like, <laughs> we have options. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, just one with meat and bread, please. That's cool. <laughs> but no, do you want a turkey burger? Do you want a oh. veggie burger? And I was like, wow. Way to go, Dare. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, I will throw a lot of that to my assistant, Chrissy. So, like, she was the one who really thought of everybody. It wasn't all me. Yeah. But I'll, I'll take the compliment No, but, you know, her. it's a team. It's yeah. a team that you have a, an awesome professional team that really cares about how people mm-hmm. feel on set. Oh, thank you. And I think it showed in the work mm-hmm. because everyone was really happy to be there, mm-hmm. especially the ending credits where everyone jumps in into the pool. The pool. <laughs> That was good. It was such a crazy, fun... Like, I wrote the song just for the fun of it. Like, there mm-hmm. wasn't really initially a goal to, like, make a music video and do all this stuff. But it's crazy how much that sparked for me in my life outside of, like, the music industry. Because you were like, hey, my gym is not far from here. You should come work out with me. <laughs> and at first I was like, I don't know. Like, ooh. Like, I get kind of shy about gyms. Yeah. Because I've had not the best experience at gyms in the past. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of women, and maybe some men can relate to this, that, like, you go to the gym and someone hits on you. And then you're like, ooh, this is uncomfortable. I don't want to work out here or sweat in this space. It's true. It's it's such a vulnerable place. And you want to be in your moment. You want to be closed off. You want to have your headsets in and get your job, get your stuff done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you have so much connection of people wanting to borrow the weights that you're using or just get into your space or they see you wearing a tight pair of pants and they're like, yo, what's up? It just, it kind of takes away that that moment of like, I want to get the stuff done. I want to get out. And then you don't really want to go back. So Yeah. And we're all there to like better ourselves. We are. That's the whole goal. And when somebody takes away that the space isn't safe anymore like Mm -hmm. they take that with them you're just like okay well i don't want to work out here anymore it's really nerve-wracking it's tough but i think i even told you that initially when you were like oh you should come work out at my gym and i i'm pretty sure i told you like i don't know i don't really do gyms anymore and you were like no no no, this gym is different like i would personally train you you'd be with me no one talks to my clients when i work out with them and it's I was awesome. like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I mean, they do, but it's not like, hey, your butt looks nice. It's yeah. more like, oh my gosh, like, don't I know you from this thing? Like, it's very, it's like a community there. It's I so love it. Safe That's me. what I want to create. I wanted to create a community. And um, I worked at all the gyms in Los Angeles, Equinox, mm. 24-Hour Fitness, LA Fitness, Gold's Gym, um, wow. Crunch. It's <laughs> Wait, what? There's a gym called Crunch? <laughs> yes. Like the crunch bar? It's funny. It, it is. It's a real, <laughs> there's that. two of them. Um, oh. But it's, you, through my, all my other gyms, because they're bigger, um, mm-hmm. you just notice a lot more of those creepy moments yeah. that make your clients feel uncomfortable. And you, you try to avoid those, but you can only do so much on your side and mm-hmm. with your clients. So then it just, it, it creates a bad environment and then you're just trying to feel better about it. So that's yeah. why I'm glad now I have my own space where I'm able to just take it for private training Mm -hmm. and everyone there is um, strictly for private training and you don't have to worry about creepers. Yeah, it's so great. Like I absolutely love, like I've been going for so long now with you. I know. Because the environment there is so great and everyone is so nice. Awesome. So I'm I'm super excited and like really happy that you picked me up when you were 18 me with you. I'm happy you you took that opportunity (laughs) to choose me. Aww. We're gonna hold hands. (laughs) I'm sorry. I don't know why that felt right. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually did prep some kind of silly gym things to like ask your opinion on. Mm. But usually on the show, we let the guest lead with their Delulu. Did okay. you have anything that's really making you feel a little Delulu? Make you feel a little silly? Running <sighs> rampant in your brain? You know what? 
I feel like it'll come out in mm. our stories. Okay. Like, yes. Yeah. Like, we'll start with those, and there'll be a segue, and I know for sure it's going to mm. come out. I got you. And you'll be like, there you are. There's the <laughs> that it is. I found you. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's, it's nerve-wracking for guests when they come on to, like, pick something to talk about, uh-huh. because we ask them, like, is there anything that you would talk for, like, 15 minutes on? And some people are like, ah, uh, I, mm. like, they just, they don't know right in that moment. Yeah. But usually when I, like, poke and prod a little bit like i just kind of like come on everybody's well, the problem is i have a lot of moment i have a lot that i could just oh. bring up mm-hmm. but we have we're at a time limit and... i got you <laughs> we'll be here for 24 hours we will be live. Here li- oh, could you imagine a, like a podcast live oh yeah i want to do that at some point Sometimes. but i'm too scared no i run my mouth too much and then i might say things that aren't the best but <laughs> we'll make it <laughs> work note cards okay okay so uh, my first question this one's like pretty easy but i'll just warm you up okay so is diet like really the key to health or is it exercise is it both like where would you weigh the scales of diet and exercise all right so here's the thing Mm -hmm. um tell us i feel like diets become a huge fad Mm -hmm. with um these like Especially for, like, on TikTok, Instagram, everyone wants to talk about the keto diet or just the paleo or what's going to count in your macros. And, yes, everybody's body is different. So there's some things that work amazing for some people and Mm -hmm. some that don't work for others. Right. For me, um, I used to teach Zumba classes. Mm. So I would teach about 16 dance classes a week. Wow. And there was no way where I could be in a calorie deficit Mm -hmm. and do a keto diet or paleo because I needed that energy for class. Yeah. And after the second class of that week, I was just drained. And sometimes I would do uh, three classes in one day. So being able to have that energy, it just, it, that's when I realized, you know what, this isn't, the diet isn't going to be the way for me. And Mm -hmm. I have to understand that it, I'm not the only one out there, that there has to be other people who feel the same way. So Yes, keto works for some people. Paleo works for some people. And it's all about having a well balance. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to make sure that if you're going, if you want to drop some weight, you're in a calorie deficit. Mm-hmm. If you're wanting to put on some size for your muscles, your muscles are hungry. You have to feed yourself. So mm-hmm. don't be in the mindset of, you know what, I'm going to have uh, McDonald's or I'm going to feed myself a bunch of fries and fried food. Because that's not the nutrients your body needs. You need more protein. Mm -hmm. So being able to drink those delicious protein Protein shakes. shakes. (laughs) Hashtag sponsor. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yes, like the protein (laughs) shakes. Being able to have like high protein meals. That's Uh important. And then, of course, getting your vegetables. So that way you could keep your your gut and your your cycle more regular. Mm. But what has really worked for me and a lot of my clients is consistency. Mm. So don't have a healthy meal on Monday and then Tuesday, give it all up. And Trash. then Wednesday, be like, oh, I'm going to eat salads now. Mm-hmm. And oh, that's the biggest problem. A lot of people think salads are just the way to go. Like, <laughs> it's healthy because it's a salad. Yeah. <sighs> you know, if you... <laughs> I think I found your delivery. Here it is. Salads. Oh my God. <laughs> I had a client who loves salads with blue cheese dressing. And if you were to look up the calories oh. on a blue cheese dressing, you might as well have two double cheeseburgers, a large French Ooh. fry, and a regular Coke because... That's how many calories are it in is, dressing? It is, yes. And the worst part is every time it gives you those calories, it's for two teaspoons. No one has two teaspoons. Of dressing. Of dressing. Yeah. Like, you smother it on. Wow. Yeah. That's such a good point. And the same thing. I like ranch isn't any better. I don't even have ranch in my fridge because I, I can't. It's a lot. But it's like, I'm watching my weight. I'm just going to uh, have um, a salad. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> You're like, next question. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> uh, well, I got some more. Well, well, more. Okay. Well, what about balsamic vinaigrette? That I was is gonna great. Ask that. Okay. Yes. Balsamic vinaigrette is actually a great way to go. Okay. But what are you mixing with your um, your greens? Are mm. you putting in some protein? Mm-hmm. Are you putting in some quinoa? Are you being? Are you just keeping it simple? Because again, by keeping it simple, you're not getting. I mean, you're feeding yourself lettuce and vinegar. Dressing. Yeah. yeah. So How is that? Like chicken or maybe like some yeah. sort of fish in it, I would guess. That would be yeah. awesome. 
I mean, mm. something very lean. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you could also get away with, like, a, a burger patty or a turkey mm-hmm. patty mm-hmm. inside the salad and just, like, fill you up a little bit more that way. I'm a big sweet potato fan, too, in salads. Amazing. Like, oh, so good. No, you, like that's candy. good. I know. It's delicious. And yeah. I feel like they don't get represented well enough. They don't. They don't. They get a bad name. My next to Lulu sweet potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Represent oh, well, sweet potatoes. Bring out, uh, hashtag free the sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if we had like an actual like chef? They come in with like I mean, different arrays of sweet what? potatoes. That's what we need. Commercials and then they uh, have a chef that brings in every time we like mention QVC, a yeah. like sweet potatoes. Get your sweet potatoes now. <laughs> oh, we should make like a recipe for sweet potatoes. Yeah. What kind though? Like. Well, I mean, you could do uh, like, like wedges. Nice. You could yeah. also um, sweet make potato wedges. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet, sweet potato wedges, French fries. Crinkle fries. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're on to something. All right. We're going to figure it out. We're on to this. Our two Delulu salad right. and sweet potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> what about, um, okay, so there's a stereotype about, um, like, people say that you should go to the gym kind of okay. thing. In general, to everyone. But then there's also this strange stereotype of, people who are bigger at the gym kind of get like side eyed or like fat shamed while they're there. How do you as a personal trainer combat that sort of behavior in a gym? Towards the people making the comments or the person receiving the comments? I would say like both. Well, I'm, I'm very much a supporter for people. Um, I, I would be the one to compliment mm-hmm. someone who I could tell they're newer to a gym. And they're either struggling to understand a piece of equipment. I'm usually the first one to say, hey, um, this is the way you use this equipment. I'm mm. a personal trainer. I just want to show you so you don't get hurt. I'm, I'm not trying to be creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm always just like, hey, just, you know, um, I'm a personal trainer, but just not trying to be creepy. I just yeah. want to show you this. Yeah. Or like, hey, way to go. Keep mm-hmm. it up. I'm like, okay. And yeah. you could tell that, that like this is uh, a struggle for them or they don't really want to be there. So... They're on that treadmill or they're on that cardio piece of equipment. Yep. And you're just like, hey, way to go. Yeah. And all it takes is a smile. A smile is like the energy that you could give off, which is like a, a fun smile, what's up, and then take off is mm-hmm. so impactful rather than a, hey, nice, <laughs> a creepy stare. nice shorts. <laughs> you're like, okay, thanks. Now I'm leaving. That's you know, I, I just, I like, I like to keep it positive at the gym. I also feel like you do a good job at your gym, the one that we work out mm-hmm. at together, that like you make everyone feel included because we were having a completely separate conversation one day and somebody else was inspired by what we were talking about and yes. totally chimed in on the conversation. That's right. And not at any point did we kind of be like, okay, dude, <laughs> like back off. Like we were very, oh, that's a great thought. Yeah. Like I feel like you do such a good job of making it. It's hard. Fun. And I will say I love, I feel very honored because I feel like it's a little bit of a compliment towards my training and towards my clients because if people want to get into my conversation, they're just always there. Like, what are you guys talking about? What's up? (laughs) And so it makes me feel good. But then at the same time, I'm battling the inner thought of, you're here for dare. Uh Make sure you focus on her. Don't get off topic. And then don't let the time run out and be like, we're done. We did five. We did five push. That's it. Good job, sport. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow we'll do six. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow we'll be better. No, but I mean, it, it is it's just a fine a, line. it is a fine line, mm-hmm. and I I battle it daily, but I, I feel like I've been able to grab onto it really well. Yeah. And just battle both because I love creating that positive environment. I love to have conversations that other people love to chat about and yeah. my big biggest thing is being able to make the client feel comfortable mm-hmm. and that could be a flaw too on my part because mm. some people don't like to share their whole lives right yeah yeah I and so. i'm just like so what do you do and what do you what did you do this weekend that's all you did <laughs> tell me more and i just i don't know i just want to get to know yes, them i do i do Aww. That's nice, though, because I think sometimes people who have shorter answers usually deal with, like, I don't want to burden this person. Mm-hmm. So I don't know that it's always bad if you poke a little. No. I, I, In it's my good. Opinion. No, it's good. You're able to find out more about them, and then they f- they connect with you. Mm-hmm. 
And even if it's something as simple as I had a date and they don't want to share that with anyone. Well, they don't want to share it with you, but you poke and you finally get some information about it. And then you're like, okay, well, let's talk about the, what's going on later. Yeah. Or when are you going to meet this person again? Mm-hmm. And they light up because that you're the one person who remembers. who remembers and you're the one person that they could talk to about this. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's awesome. It's, it is fun. That's kind of like bartending. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you mean like the same way you poke at them and get to know them and you know yeah. everything about them. So when they come back, it's like, so how did that one thing go? Mm-hmm. But for me, if I had a trainer, I'd be like, no, I don't want to get to know you. Don't ask me questions. Really? I want to hate you so I can get through my training because I need something to work off at. So it's like, <laughs> so drill me like a drill instructor so I can get this over with and go. And it's just like, God, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Just like that. You That's me. You small <laughs> chat. You don't like the little like, so... Cosmo, you're wearing pink today. You look good. You look good. Unless, unless I have someone like JP in my life that I'm like, I want to hang out with you afterwards. Yeah. Uh, Nights of I don't want to hang out with my trainer. You afterwards. don't want your trainer to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're not the only one. You're, I get that a lot too. And mm. maybe um, that's why I have trouble um, training straight guys. Because, oh, oh, the tea. The tea. Here it is. Let's hear it. Let's okay, hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Comfy. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the thing about it, like everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? We all were like, tell you here we go, here Cosmo. We go. Wait, right. wait, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, it's right. just, I mean, there, there's different kind of training methods for people. Sure. And I have had to learn them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, at first, I did think everyone wanted a boot camp trainer. Mm-hmm. And I lost a lot of clients that way. Because I was too rough. Um, I thought getting them to the verge of about to throw up was good. Oh, no. <laughs> because that's what I learned at one of my gyms. I won't say the first gym that I worked at. But they said, <gasps> when you do your training session with the client, you finish with these stairs and have them go up and down four times. And they will want to puke by the second time. And of course, if someone's out of shape, you don't make them do stairs. Wow. And I've learned this later, and it really frustrates me the most because wow. it's a franchise gym, and it's just a way to market to get people vulnerable to have to pay for training sessions and be mm. like, "I'm miserable. I'm out of shape. I'm horrible. Yes, I need you." Like, no, you should want to be here. You should want to be able to get better together. We should want a, a partnership, mm-hmm. and you shouldn't be fearful every time you see me that you're gonna throw up. And yeah. it, uh, who enjoys that? <laughs> like, who would want that? Oh, Cosmo does. <laughs> Cosmo wants it. I mean, it's just, that's the motivation for me. Okay. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I like that better. Yeah. It's weird. See, I like a sweaty hug. So <laughs> <laughs> I like a little bit of a sweaty hug when I've done a good job, you know? Yeah. Well, you know what? I will say this. When I first moved to Los Angeles, I was um, 18 and I was hitting my 208 pounds. Mm. which was like, ooh, scary for me because I was never over 200 pounds. And I was wow. like, 208, okay, we need to do something. And I went to a boot camp. Oh. And I would do it at 5.30 every morning. And there was something about having a whistle blown at you and them knowing your name and screaming at you that was kind of like, okay, you know you need to do this. Mm-hmm. This is why you have, you're here. Yeah. So it there, there is that, but long for longevity i don't think it would have it's some. i mean it obviously it's something i haven't continued with yeah so it, w- it worked for the moment and i could see it working for the moment yeah i mean it's like the 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 cycling <laughs> the mm-hmm. stationary thing or or the treadmill or whatnot Spinning classes or just yeah. or just going on a jog or going to a hike i'm like i can't do it without a purpose so something's chasing me or i'm, I'm late for something <laughs> or yeah, I need to walk up this damn mountain because I need to go to safety because the freaking cougars after me. You know what? There is an app. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh no is there an way. app for that? There no is an way. app. It's oh my gosh, I'm gonna forget it. But it's about zombies who chase you, Whoa. and you listen to it on your ear, uh, your ears. Where else would you listen to it? On your headset, <laughs> and you have your headset on. You're listening to music, and then you just hear. And then it says, hey, player one, be careful. There's a zombie 200 feet behind you. Now is the time to jog. And it marks, like, how fast you're going to make sure you 
get away from the zombie. And it just helps you, like, jog, run. Okay, come back to jogging. Okay, we missed him. We're clear. Mm -hmm. Go back to walking. You're fine. Whoa. I know. It's pretty cool. It's kind of cool. It is. Yeah. It's kind of cool. We better find out the name of that. We should. Yeah. 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 Sponsor. Zombie apocalypse. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. Zombie apocalypse. Zombie marathon. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Something like that, you know? Yeah. We should sign up for it. That's a great. I will not. Farewell in that because no. I, I want the zombies to hug me. I don't know, but see, I would get in the flight of like fight or flight mode and be like, all right, we're the nearest branch, I'm gonna knock Let's some go. heads oh. over. <laughs> see, oh, there we go. Just... And we're like, um, hello, Cosmo, we're supposed oh, to be running oh, oh. and you're fighting. I mean, I, I used to do, I do, I used to do martial arts growing up, so it's like the drill instructor, mm-hmm. the fight or flight, the reflexes from like kendo to uh, muay thai. So it's just like mm. I'm trained in that condition to be bossed moved around and then for yeah. reflexes i used Dang. to have my reflexes used to be so bad somebody oh. sneak up behind me there's an elbow coming to somebody's face yeah oh but now i've calmed down a lot throughout my age i'm like well if i get hit first i get hit first because i can <laughs> i can absorb that but i'm going yeah. to retaliate after that so, oh. so oh. yeah so i learned i learned not to be so on guard yeah just yeah. loose and i'm like if it's a fu- if a fist coming my way just gotta take it oh and then after that nice. i'm just like all right then we're in trouble. Then we're in trouble. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. so even if there was a cougar chasing you, you wouldn't run is what you're basically saying. <laughs> if there was a, well, if I hear something like a zombie in the background or a cougar or something rushing, I am one of those people that are going to run to safety, okay, not okay. run to death. Got it. And okay. trip and fall with the killers like after me, like they always do in movies. <laughs> cougar animal, just to clarify. Yes, yes, not not a middle aged woman. No, either or, okay? <laughs> either or, you would run. Either okay, or. Good. All right. Good to know. And also, I learned not to scare Cosmo because you get a punch in the face. Not yeah, anymore. Not that. anymore. Not anymore. I love scaring people. I that's I love to do it. Do you? I do. Oh, it's just a thrill. Oh, I... And then I'm the kind that will laugh about it. Yeah? I think it's funny. And then I'm bleeding because they punched me. Or <laughs> I'm so... <laughs> on the floor, tripping because they pushed me. I'm like, oh, but it's funny. I'm so glad you've never done anything to me at the gym like that because I will jump at anything. Oh, yeah. I'm very skittish. Oh, fun. I should Noted. not have told. No. Yeah. Oh, no. No. Well, the good thing is you come during the day, so there's other people there. So. Yeah. My 5 a.m. clients, oh, they hate me. Your 5 a.m. ones? Oh, yeah. You scare them? Oh, yeah. Guess I put on, like, running. thriller music on. Like, right when they come in yeah. and you're, like, in the bathroom so they can't see you're there. Oh, yeah. <gasps> or I'll turn the lights on and make them think that the gym's open and I'll hide by my car. Stop <laughs> it! You're going to give them trauma! <laughs> and then they say, can you lock the door? And I'm like, yeah, why? You're like, why? What do you mean? And you, like, jump out? Huh? It'll get the heart rolling, I'll tell you that. It wakes me up, you know? I, <laughs> You're like, I, you do it for me. I, it, it is. It's for oh me. Oh, my it's gosh. Yeah, I'm never doing the 5 a.m. <laughs> sessions now. No. Speaking of scary things, do you uh, have body dysmorphia? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, that's so it, triggering. It is. No, it is. I think it's important to talk about it, though. It is. And it is kind of scary and sad. It is. It, I mean, everyone has it. And really? I don't, yes, it, it's, everyone does have it. Oh. Um, have some it. people have it a lot more. You have it? Yeah. Yeah. Now that I'm on, I have a show and I'm like standing mm-hmm. in front of the thing and I look at myself and I'm like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. And I just, I'm like, just, let's get through this. Let's do jumps as <laughs> quicks, you know, maybe like, let me get up closer to the camera so <laughs> you don't see the rest of my can body. Put, how many oh. filters can we put in? Seriously. But it's a, it's a, it's a thing. It's yeah. it's tragic because it doesn't get better. No. And it's something that lives with you forever. Um, I will say you get better at handling it, mm-hmm. but it still always stays there. Hmm. Um, as a dancer, growing up, we were always um, talked about for our, our weight and just making sure that we were... Um, you want to be a fit dancer. You want to be the, th- the thinnest one. You want to be the most muscular. And there's just so much shame in that environment. Mm-hmm. There's so much shame in the LGBT community environment really? for for oh. body shaming. Hmm. Um, the gym, too, it's, it's very welcoming. But there's a little bit of that... Um, High school mentality. Yes, there we go. Like the locker room chat of like, hey, I'm going to 
motivates you, but I'm also going to like talk about your body. Your body. I, you know what? I actually brought in a friend to work out with me the other day mm-hmm. and amazing body, totally fit. And it was, it was good because he was an influencer as well. Mm-hmm. And he had a bunch of followers and was going to like share, share my information, share the gym. Aww. And we're like, okay, cool. Great. And then afterwards he left and you just hear all these trainers kind of come up to me and be like, oh, I'm glad you finally decided to get a trainer for yourself. And I'm like, ha ha. Oh. Ha ha. So, it, I mean, it's just like, something that like, it does. It... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, gonna, nice. we're cutting back from the tears and we're, <laughs> no, but it it's just like, whether it was a joke or not, mm-hmm. it, it does hit everyone differently. Right. You know, um, I have clients who are very self-conscious of their calves and they want to grow their calves. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and they love going back to what Cosmo's talking about, being that bully to motivate. Mm-hmm. So I'll say something like, Let, let's go. We're going to go work on those calves. We need to build those calves. And you could see like their energy shifts. And I was like, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. It was a joke. And then they're like, no, no, I, I like it. But you learn to deal with it. But you, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that you really yeah. accept it. Yeah. And it, it's it's tough. I mean, there's always going to be that one thing of, no matter how much plastic surgery you get, no much how much how much uh, Botox you get, mm-hmm. or any kind of cosmetic surgery, or even like getting bigger at the gym and more in shape, you're still constantly finding that that little thing that bothers that you. needs to be fixed. Yeah. Huh. I guess I never took a second to think about that. Like everybody has some form of body dysmorphia. Mm-hmm. I never thought about it that way. Hmm. And it, it's actually yeah. cool. If you taught, if you find someone who is very open about it, mm-hmm. um, which most people are, I mean, no one, yeah, they'll lie to you if there's, if they don't, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they'll lie like, to you. I am perfect. But uh, I like the, um, the guy that I worked out with, <laughs> I was lifting heavier than he was Oh. Okay. and I was putting more, mu- more muscles on. Yeah. And I mean, um, lifting more weight mm-hmm. cause I'm stronger. Whoa. <laughs> and so I, I had to like show up, you know, Sounds. I had to be like, let's go. All right. You want to, okay. You have the body, but I have the muscle Whoa. and the strength. So yeah. there's, true. There's, I, a, there's a difference. Yes. There's yeah. a difference in the bulk and then the strength. <sighs> there is a difference in the bulk and the strength. Mm-hmm. And I had the strength and he had the body, hmm. but being able to say like, you know what? I, I wish I had that body because that body, your body looks really good. I wish I had more of like your chest. Yeah. Then they will be like, well, I wish I had more of your legs because you have really great legs. So being able to hear their yeah. insecurities mm-hmm. really just level both of you. And that's, I feel, a good place to be. Oh, for like, sure. Like, okay, cool. We, You know what? Mm-hmm. I envy this about you, but you envy this about me. It's like seeing eye to eye kind of thing. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's like with me and anybody Japanese. I envy them. Their hair, their style, their oh, clothes. Oh, really? And their, the culture. Just love it. Yeah. yeah. Aww. So. Actually, I heard it, the show that we um, that I did. Mm-hmm. There, were, of course, we had all of our um, dance attire on, mm-hmm. and some of the girls were always just talking about each other's bodies. And a lot of them are ripped, and a lot of them have like great bodies. Yeah. And there was these two girls who have like amazing six packs, mm-hmm. amazing, just super fit. And you could see the other girls just like thin, great body, but mm-hmm. go up to her and be like just freaking love your abs i just love your stomach mm-hmm. and she's like well i wish i had your legs and i'm like there you go dang and it just totally took away that energy of just like again leveling each other out because you know what we're all there together and we all have struggles and mm-hmm. finding out where each other's is is a way you could motivate each other and be like let's do it let's, let's do some it. legs today let's do some legs today let's do some abs yeah so you talk a lot about like leveling the playing field kind of thing and like complimenting each other Mm -hmm. on things that you like on someone else and vice versa. So now I'm wondering what happens when you get a client who isn't as open or is, I don't want to say a bad client because I don't know that there's such thing as a bad client. Maybe the ones that cancel, but what about (laughs) somebody maybe comes in with like a negative mindset or someone who comes in and kind of trauma dumps on you? Like, do you have clients that I don't want to say like work well with you, but I, I guess that's the best way to put it. Being a personal trainer. <laughs> oh, here's the PR statement. Is very much like being 
a bartender. No, no, oh. not even a bartender. I'm gonna take that away no. and say l- it l- is. L- l- a little l- bit. No, l- a little l- bit. L- l- let's see the similarities. All right, I'm gonna say being a hairstylist because oh, hairstylists have to listen to some shoot. You can say shit now. Sh- now we can say we're it? past ten minutes. Oh my god! Finally, <laughs> they have to listen to some shit. And <laughs> They, yes, do. they do, and they that's do. The, like sometimes I, I have to set myself up for this. I know mm-hmm. who's coming in next. Okay, this is what it's gonna be. It's gonna be an hour of drama about you. Okay, let's deal with that. And you could take that challenge of you know what? Let me motivate it. Let me turn it around upside or turn your frown upside down. Yeah. You know what? You think your glass is half full. It's actually half empty. That's good. Mm-hmm. And they're like. No, but the, if they choose to still stay negative, right. then it's a bigger problem. And it's something like you can't take on yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's usually, if I take on too much, I usually give myself like four clients at max and then I need to take a break. Yeah. I will go to get a coffee. I will go change the scenery, go to another gym and then come back or just get my own workout in because it, it's heavy. Mm-hmm. And as much as you try to change the energy, it's like it's like a podcast. Imagine yourself being the only one that talked and the other person's like, no. Um, no. <laughs> do you want to do this? No, I don't like it. Yeah. Okay. But you smile and you're like, no, what? It's it's hard. I <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's really tough. Yeah. But um mm-hmm. I you you just have to like have a bunch of tools in your back pocket to be able to pull out so that way you could switch um switch up an exercise that they could do Mm -hmm. or find something that they could relate to and you just start talking more about yourself Mm, and that's sometimes good and sometimes that that's uh it makes it easier on everyone yeah because i i imagine that's i mean for me in this podcast like we get to heavily curate whoever we bring on, you mm-hmm. know? And I guess in a way, you being a trainer, you have that power too. Because, I mean, sure, you've got bills to pay. Mm-hmm. You've got to eat. But also at the end of the day, you could decide that, like, you know, this person, it's just not a good fit. Maybe it's time to, like, let them go, so to speak. But um, have you ever had somebody really question or test you a little bit where you're like, hey, this next exercise, we're going to do 10 sumo squats. Okay, ready? And then they're just like, no, I don't want to do that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, really? Every single day. Oh, but they, they usually end up caving and doing it, right? Or... No. So oh. I... Um... <laughs> you don't have to get into I won't, I won't get into specific. Okay. I'm trying to keep it general. Keep it PG. Keep, keep, keep it PG. general. Um, this person... <laughs> call them out. No, it's just... there. There's a lot... There's sometimes where your body just won't work mm-hmm. um, to with a certain exercise. Whether okay. it be... I have bad balance. I have suffered through vertigo. I have an ingrown toenail and I can't put any pressure on this foot. And it's just Ugh. like, hey, try this. No, I, I don't. It's do this ab exercise. I don't feel my abs. I feel it on my back. Okay, well, let's try this ab exercise. Do this here. No, I feel it on my hips. Okay. Hmm. And sometimes even though there's um, a, the core that goes throughout the, the back as well into mm-hmm. the front, it's understanding the difference of where the core is and that the person who doesn't really understand the anatomy of a body Mm -hmm. or even personal training will say, Oh, I feel it all in my back. I'm like, no, it's part of your core. It's, it's, Mm. it's all there, but okay. You just have to say, okay, because the last thing you want them to do is get hurt. Mm -hmm. Be, um, especially since you're not in their body, Mm -hmm. being able to listen to what they have to say. And if they don't want to do it, then why am I going to make them do it? Right. There's so many tools out there that, we could use to get you to do something else or we'll take a water break and we'll go talk about something else. You're so level headed with all this. Like (laughs) that's probably why you're such a good trainer. Like I've had some experience, a lot of years of experience, (laughs) a a lot of uh, crying sessions too. Those are good. Those are the best ones. When you show up to train and you're like, "Mm." and I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, Oh gosh. Okay. Let's walk. And it's just, you know what? I need that person needed to vent. There's something about the gym that I didn't realize till we had worked out together mm-hmm. that it it really does open you up. Like it's a very vulnerable, like physically it's vulnerable, but emotionally. Yeah. It's like when you're when you're putting your body 
like testing it to the limit, it mm-hmm. really makes you like talk differently and speak differently. Like there were some things I was telling you that I haven't told like anybody. Oh really? And I was like, what? What is? Why am I? It's like you doing that <laughs> thing I, to me. Why did I bring that up? Are you why? reading my mind? A or, bit. Yeah. A bit. And it was it's so great. Like I, it feels better not only physically like work out, but also like a weight is lifted mm-hmm. when you feel like you can talk about things that you normally wouldn't with others so yeah same with alcohol that's same with alcohol that's true that is true but it's like uh, i love to compare throwing a tantrum to um endurance training because when you're doing endurance like a ball slam or whatever you need that aggression you need that energy to slam something to the floor Mm -hmm. or even just push your limits but that's at the moment if you ever compare the two of that and when you're at your lowest Mm -hmm. and just like crying and sobbing because something's bothering you Mm -hmm. it's the same energy system Mm -hmm. and you're just letting it all out and you're that's where that's why it brings up trauma that's why you're like hey um so this is really pissing me off about my ex and i'm like oh okay oh let's all right let's talk about about it or so being able to hear these stories you're just like it it's amazing that um, out of um, endurance training, you get, like, the random topics. Yeah. <laughs> we do. I we get that. some good topics, you and I. We do. We talk a lot of <laughs> some, yeah, deep celebrity gossip topics. But, like, we'll, we'll have to bring you back for one of those because oh, okay. we, we got some some tea and We some got info. some tea. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a couple statistics that I pulled offline that Uh-oh. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Um, so... Various statistics reveal that around 50% of Americans set New Year's resolutions, which is cool. 50%? That's great. Mm -hmm. But um, with a mere 8% keeping them. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. That's that's (laughs) absolutely correct. It's weird because New Year's resolutions, you're all for it that first week, the -hmm. first two weeks, maybe the first month. Um, you sign up for that gym membership, you sign up for the, uh, you set all those goals Mm -hmm. and usually all the gym memberships are six month contracts or no one does month to month. Yeah. Something like that. Your contract. So, you know, you're already saying yes for a long time. But the thing about it is we, what I tell my clients is you guys can't set yourself up for unrealistic uh, goals Mm -hmm. and you can't set it up for too much if you want to start with one thing, you know what? I want to get into the gym. Into the gym is all you need. You don't yeah. need to say, I need to gain, uh, lose 15 pounds. I need to uh, put on 10 pounds of muscle. I want to get a six pack. Like, no, get into the gym. What that mm-hmm. You didn't go into the gym for the last three months. How about let's get into the gym first? Mm-hmm. Okay. So after you've done that for two weeks, now let's set another uh, example or another goal. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to start taking away one of my unhealthy meals a week. Okay, there you go. You start creating a balance and then you start eating better. You start looking better. And that that's what motivates you Mm -hmm. because you see the changes on the in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And if you do so much at in the beginning, I'm going to go five days a week. I'm going to eat healthy the entire week. I'm only going to have one cheat day. Like your body is freaking out. It's not used to it. Yeah. And it's like putting diesel inside of a car <laughs> that takes like <laughs> re- unleaded yeah. gasoline. It's like, wait, hold on. Like, uh, why? What What are we doing? Yeah. And it's just like, you can't, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Get your body used to a set schedule. Get your body used to a set routine. Mm-hmm. And then you don't have to come up with the most crazy exercises that you see at the gym. It All you need is like a little bit of cardio. Mm-hmm. You need to get that core engaged yes and then you could start focusing and start splitting up the muscle groups in your upper body and then your lower body mm-hmm. but just get the ha- get the hamster wheel rolling first right before yeah. you start trying to rearrange yeah <laughs> everything that's so funny because we had an episode at this point is going to be way in the beginning of the, the Lulu, so be sure to go back and watch it. But I talk about how January is, like, the worst month ever. Mm-hmm. I personally think, and a lot of people in the comments agreed, yeah. because everyone wants to change, not everyone, but 50% of Americans yes. want to change so many things about themselves in, what, like, they go to sleep the night before New Year's, woo, and then they exactly. wake up and they're like, I want to eat clean, I want to work out, I want to save money, I want to not go to the bars, and you don't see them for a whole month because they, like, really are burying themselves 
into this idea of being the best version of themselves, but then they end up falling off, coming back in February, all the bad habits, and like nothing was sustained. So it's interesting that because you it's, brought it's, that up too. It's not a balance. Yeah. It's not realistic. It's not something you could achieve. And that's a, um, a, achieve for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. It's obviously something you could achieve um, if you set any goal. But yeah. the same thing with like going back to those diets. Yes, you, you could do paleo keto for a month maybe three months four months or good for you if you could do it longer (laughs) but how is that yeah life when you go and hang out with your friends how how do you how are you able to i would have friends have microwaves inside their car and they would connect it to their um the port like the cigarette port or whatever uh, can you still say cigarette port because like no one no one smokes anymore that's what i call it yeah yeah good what is it cigarette port cigarette outlet port yeah it's like the usb now is what it technically is but what was it before (laughs) cigarette port is that really that's not technically what the term is i mean no i mean you you push this thing in and then it got heat and foil. then you would burn it. Yeah. You take it out and you. Pff, they don't. They don't put them in cars cigarette anymore. Cigarette port. There it is. <laughs> cigarette, port. Port. cigarette port. But they would connect it to yes. their vehicle, yes. and they would um, be like, "Hey, so I'm. We're at the bar. We're drinking. We're having fun. All right, I'm gonna go to my car real quick. I'll be back." Or like, "Okay, what would you do? Oh, I just ate my dinner." Okay. Oh, Which yeah, you made okay. it work. Well, sure. Why? Why is? Why are you doing that for your life? Yeah. How is that? Unless you're working again, like a bodybuilding, you have a, a goal, you have a, a show you need to work on, yeah. you're um, filming something and you want to be like set for that. Okay, good. That's not a lifetime though. That's right, right. short term. Mm-hmm. And people get confused with that. Hmm. So, but I'm really curious about those goals or the statistics yeah. on this year though, because mm. this year I felt no one that I know really had a oh. New Year's resolution or oh. no one really said it. And none of my clients actually came to me and said, this is what I want to do for New Year's. Interesting. Okay. Which is, so... it's tricky because I mean, they want, e- even me going up into uh, Christmas, Christmas and November, December, I usually have a fallout of clients. So oh. I'll usually usually do a show. Mm-hmm. I'll do something more creative because I don't have time on um, November and December. Mm-hmm. But because people were actually um, training and then they had no goal, no goals really, or New Year's resolution for New Year's, mm-hmm. then it was more to just keep them coming and feel good about themselves. Oh, so wait, you had no one drop? No one dropped. Oh my no gosh, one dropped. that's amazing! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Ta da! Yes. But wow. I mean, I mean, this is actually something I never heard from a lot of um, a lot of other trainers too. Wow. That the New Year's resolution thing is kind of going away because you don't want to have that negative uh, vision of, "Hey, what is wrong with me? What do I need to fix?" Right, right. And it's true. You you shouldn't have to fix anything, mm-hmm. but you should view it as a way of like, "What can I change to make my life more sustainable, healthier, and better, yeah. so I feel better about myself." And there's always that little change that you can make. Of course. Yeah, I love that. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, you're probably confused why we're all in different outfits. (laughs) (laughs) Wardrobe change. Uh, So we're still a very new podcast, and we actually had some audio issues where my card filled all the way up because we were talking so much tea, so much juice, (laughs) that it just decided it was done recording. So we brought everybody back, and instead of like trying to fake it and like put on the same outfits and pretend nothing happened, I will always wear my heart on a sleeve and I'll always just be honest and say like, whoops, we had a little bit of a hiccup, but we're back. We're gonna finish this episode strong. And uh, I think we all look great in our second outfits. This is great. A costume change is definitely worth it. Honestly, we're all actors here. So, <laughs> Well, I mean, it was a hurricane. We were talking about the hurricane. Yes. <laughs> and uh, there was a hailstorm. So that also happened. Maybe it was raining sideways. It was raining. We had to cut it for 
electric purposes. Totally wasn't our fault. What happened was oh, is I, I needed a, like a vape break and I went oh. outside and I was like, you know, I don't like what I'm wearing. So I just went home and changed and then. No, and then told changed. us all to change. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone go and change. <laughs> and like, I need a break, but also I need to change. It's that- actually like the same day and we just had this in our Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was 10 minutes, you guys. <laughs> but for those of you that are listening on Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen to this, you're probably, you didn't even notice, but I I'd rather just, I'd rather just be honest than yeah. pretend like nothing happened or nothing went wrong That's when fun. we're so new. Like yeah. we haven't even been up for a year. We're still an infant. So mm-hmm. I'd rather just be honest, say oopsie doopsies and move on. Oopsie. We were just celebrating that you had zero clients drop from Woo-hoo. New Year's, which so proud of you. Like, how does that make you feel? I feel accomplished. <laughs> I feel on top of the world. Yeah. And I am, it's it's actually just a good sign. It makes me feel, I, I've always built my relationships with fitness being more of um, hands-on and just like connecting with people. And when I feel like the relationship is strong, it just makes me feel like my friendship is going in the right direction. I feel like that's such a testament to how wonderful and nice you are and you like accommodate like you're such an actor you accommodate your personality and your workouts to each individual and I feel like if someone or if anyone that set like a new year's resolution decided that that wasn't going to work for them they would have left and they all stayed so that's such a testament to who you are thank you I don't know if you've realized that I like hearing that thank you (laughs) give me that compliment hold that for a minute yeah hold hold this no that's awesome awesome now, speaking of you being an actor, I, I know you've had some like really awesome auditions lately and I can never share the things that I'm auditioning for. And I know that sometimes you probably can't as well, but have you had any really cool like moments in auditioning recently since the strike is now over? People are kind of starting to go back to work. Yes. And I'm trying to re-rack my brain if anything was on the non-disclosure list, but I, I don't think it was. I don't think it oh. was. So oh, tea. I could say it. Um, I auditioned for J Lo's new uh, musical <gasps> that she's working on called Kiss of a Spider Woman. Whoa! So, what? Yes, it's a musical that's coming out this year. Oh my goodness! Um, I or- just watched her documentary, <laughs> so and we just talked about it on the, like a couple Delulus ago. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Okay, and they even leaked the title to you. That's yes. that's pretty rare for auditions. Mm-hmm. It, it, it really was. They told us what they were looking for. I went in as a prisoner. and oh, Okay. <laughs> I know. I know, me. Um, okay. But it was crazy because they had, like, different styles of prisoners. They had prisoners who just all ranges. Wow. And I've never spent a night or any time in prison, but mm-hmm. I saw the types that would yeah. spend time in prison, and that's... Actually, probably why I didn't book it. Oh, <laughs> oh spoiler alert. <laughs> well, I spent time in prison. Watch. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, me? <laughs> All of us are. It was on a set for um, um, uh, retail therapy. Oh, <laughs> oh that's right. Now, I'm not uh, saying that it was like prison, the actual music video, but it was, there was a place that we recorded at that had a jail cell in the back. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, this is pretty cool. So while everyone was busy, I was... I was like doing my little takes on TikTok. I, I may or may not have also done a filming in that <laughs> yeah. same section. Maybe the Chicago scene. <gasps> yes. Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, I want to book that location again just to shoot some silly stuff in that jail cell because I see other influencers shooting there mm-hmm. and then claiming they've been arrested. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've seen them making TikToks, being like, "They let me have my phone in jail today," and I'm like, no, they did. "That's a studio in Burbank, <laughs> you liar!" Call you out. What are you, for you? What are you, Paris Hilton? Come on. Come on. Yeah, that that location's super cool, but it's it's funny how people just believe anything that you post. You know, true. it's true. But like, congrats on the J Lo audition. You. That's so cool to say that you were up for that, even if it wasn't a home run. You know what? It was it was awesome just to put my hat back into the audition field and for a big movie musical that's gonna do it's gonna be way better than the j-lo documentary (laughs) i for her sake i hope so because i think people are being a little cruel you You know know? what i get it if you have the money do it why not Mm -hmm. but it doesn't help when it's coming right before a announcement that you're gonna go sell 
arenas and then yeah. the, the ticket sales don't do well or if you're like gonna make this movie musical like now it's gonna have a bad taste in the mouth of people wanting to go see it so I don't know. Yeah, I feel like she just did too much in too short of a time. I think if she would have breadcrumbed it and then also collaborated more with people mm-hmm. instead of... Because I think she was the lead writer on the documentary mm-hmm. and obviously for her music. But I think that that's what makes collaboration so special is that you can run it by people and they'll honestly give you their feedback. And then mm-hmm. they put in like what makes them feel good and exactly. feel full. And, and then it becomes more of a, a bigger project with a bigger meaning rather than... I got back together with Ben Affleck and here's my story. You know, it, it like, just felt kind of flat. This must be another one because I've, I've seen one when she was talking about the Super Bowl. Gearing mm-hmm. up towards the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Yep. Maybe that's. That was another, uh, no, that one's an, another one. She's that's doing another, another yeah. thing? No, she did one no, no, before. No. Oh, okay, okay. No, I'm yeah. Like, so I was like, which 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 documentary, documentary is this? Because yeah. I saw the one. It was probably like last year. Probably uh, was. I think it was like two years ago. Two yeah, years yeah. Ago. it was like her road to the Super Bowl, like performing for the Super oh, Bowl. Oh, okay, that to it, me is way different. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that one actually was fun. That if was you're good. if you enjoy the halftime shows for the Super Bowl, it just gave you some That's behind the scenes like uh, rehearsal clips and stuff. It was fun. Yeah, that one I liked. Yeah, while well, she's working on that one movie, she did Hustler, mm-hmm. something like oh, that, and then okay. doing it at the same time, and then organizing the whole thing, and then getting told at the last minute. We can't do this certain thing. We can't put this. We can't make this message. I think there's kids in like yeah in like a jail cell, like just a uh, present a, me- a message. That's yeah. all it okay. was. Yeah, it was. It was so it's kind of like the propaganda and the red tape of the Super Bowl. Yeah, and then being Bowls. a celebrity a star or whatnot. So it was pretty huh. good. I liked it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see that one. I kind of highly recommend it. Yeah. yeah, I might go back and watch that today because I'm doing a movie marathon. Yeah. Um, speaking of acting, oh. I have like a. A weird left field question for you. Okay. So most actors are servers. It's kind of like the stereotype. Mm-hmm. But now, like, I feel like that stereotype is evolving where, like, a lot of them now are content creators or do their own thing. Do you recommend actors that, like, really want to go big in the industry or, like, do what you and I do where we're we're non-union, mm-hmm. but, like, we, we are constantly on sets working, doing things, helping other people. Do you recommend actors that have a passion for fitness to maybe follow in your footsteps and be an actor, but also do personal training? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, The best thing about being in the fitness field is that you're constantly working on bettering yourself, Mm. keeping your physique looking good, um, still being like very like an athlete. You want to be able to move. You want to be able to dance. You want to be able to just be very versatile. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the fitness industry, you're able to accomplish those things and it's better. It'll show off in your acting for sure. I love that. I like it. No, I I really do recommend it. The thing that's kind of tricky though, is once you develop a relationship with your client Mm -hmm. and you book something, now it's just like having that openness with the client to let them know hey, um, how do we make this work? Because I'm going to be doing this gig. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of theater doesn't make that much. Yeah. And so it has to be definitely a passion of yours. But if you're trying to make ends meet or survive on, on money mm-hmm. for, a, for a period of time, you just want to make sure you pick and choose your battles. And when you want to possibly lose a client because you want to do a show that's only going to be short term, or are you going to find a ways to... Maybe not sleep for that month because you have to wake up at five in the morning to train a client and then you have to go to rehearsal till midnight. So it's finding a balance for sure. And you did that recently. I mean, by the time this comes out, you will <laughs> yes, have done it a I while know. ago. I, but I did. You juggled a show and personal training. It was it was tough. There it was three weeks of rehearsal, which seems like so easy to do, and then three weeks of shows. Mm-hmm. But we were rehearsing in Long Beach. Which is far Which from is where far we work from, out. Yes. Yeah. So from where I live. And it was about an hour commute at the end of the night. With You're... traffic. <laughs> no, there was no traffic. There was none? At oh, midnight. never mind. It was at midnight. Great. So at mid... Oh, well, some days you have the construction workers. But anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was about a, an hour commute on the way, um, coming back. And then you just have a, your 5 a.m. clients. So you have to wake up at least an hour before that to get your body functioning. Yeah. And then you try to take midday naps in your car Aww. and <laughs> become a little homeless for a little bit. Yeah. Like, oh, I live out of your but car. But no, it's, it's, you, you understand why you're doing it and you realize it's for the passion. You love the theater. You love your job. But then understanding this isn't my long-term goal. Like I can't do this for more than a month. I can't right. do this for 
six months. If if you are, then you need to reevaluate what what you're gonna do. Yeah. So that way, at least you present yourself the best way to either your clients or to theater. Hmm, that's a hard thing to juggle. It, Oof. It's but super hard. <laughs> I give you a lot of credit. The show you were in, it was very dance heavy. So you were not only working on helping your clients be the best that they can, but you mm-hmm. also were juggling your own mental health, your own physical health. So congrats to you on an amazing show. Thank you. And for being just awesome. Like Thank I you. love working out with you. Oh, stop. Stop me to make My you fans cry. like try to steal you too. They're Do like, they? I'm gonna work out with him when I'm called to California. Me first. <laughs> <laughs> <Gotta> find me. <laughs> well, in the beginning of this episode, you didn't really have a Delulu, so I'm gonna pass you my little note card oh. and I'm gonna let you pick what Delulu you are while I wrap up this episode. <sighs> Thank you all so much for watching. If you are listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, be sure to leave us a great review because again, we are new. So leave us 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, whatever you can. I think I'm probably the bear in the Delulu logo Mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I'm very Mm -hmm. like, just looking back like, all right, we did that. I like the middle guy. You like the dog? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fudge? Like, <laughs> you can swear. It's fine. No, no. We're past the 30 minutes. Yeah, Great. yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just like having the like confidence, but just yes. also like don't mess with me. Yeah. I haven't slept. <laughs> like, where's my caffeine? Where, you know what? So let's talk about my Delulu. My biggest Delulu is just let's the misconception it. of starting a gym routine or the gym. Mm. You know, I... It's so crazy. I like to be a person too. Yeah. And if I go, if we go out for drinks, we go out for food, don't talk to me about like, hey, I shouldn't be eating this, right? Because you're a trainer. Like, it's, I'm a normal person too. I love burgers. I love french fries. I had a burger before I got here. Whoa. But, whoa. (laughs) Full disclosure. (laughs) But it's just like, you have to have a balance. You have to understand what, what it is that you want to accomplish how serious you want to be with that goal Mm -hmm. and don't put on your own restrictions of I need to work out first before I get a trainer, even though you don't know what you're doing. It just doesn't make sense. Just be honest with yourself. You know what? Right now I'm not ready for a trainer. I'll be wasting money because I'm not focused Mm -hmm. or let's do it. It's going to financially be a a struggle for a moment, but at least I could go on my own and continue this knowledge that you've given me and continue to build up upon it. Mm-hmm. So that's just my, my, my biggest misconception is just a lot of people saying they're ready, dropping the hints, but not wanting to take action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, not ready to commit. do I, are you telling me this to vent? Or are you telling right. me this? Yes. Are you telling me this to vent or do you want advice? That's like my favorite when someone's going on a tangent, like, <laughs> We love to just say that to each we other. We do. We do now as like a meme, but it's it's such a good thing to use. Like, it do you is. want advice or do you just want to vent? It's so you funny. Want? You should use that in life because some use people it. just want to vent and they don't need your opinion. They don't need your input. Just be a good ear. All right, Cosmo, who are you in the canoe? I am the bear. You are the bear. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Woo-woo. Like that happened. Oh, All right. Go, go away. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much for listening. We're going to take this over to Patreon because I pulled a very interesting Reddit story that I'm going to throw at you and I want your opinions on. All right. And I have like a question about gossip in the gym. So join our Patreon. Let's do it. Join it. Go do it. Click the button and subscribe. Bye.